Hi everyone. Hey, it's Katrina Sawa here in the Jumpstart Your uh, Marketing and Business Now group. And today I want to talk to you about love. I know I'm usually talking about money and business and marketing and how to really uh, get more clients and you know be more efficient and productive and all that good stuff. And that stuff is so important. That what is what I call the doing side of your business. And today though, I wanna talk about the being side of your business, and in particular, being love. And I'm gonna tell you a story about something that happened to me about 11, 11 years ago, and why now I teach the being as much as the doing, although you may not see it as much on Facebook, although you're gonna see it more often than not. But today I wanna to talk to you about being love, Love in general, of course, it's February, and we're supposed to, you know, we need to be love um, all, every day of the year, not just during the month of February. But um, this morning, it inspired me to uh, come on and, and share a little bit about why I find that this is one of the most critical things that could actually uh, get you more business in general and um, be more productive as well. So let me share what happened to me in 2008. I was about six years into my business and I was literally banging my head up against the wall going, how in the hell am I gonna make six figures? Because I was doing all the right things, I was in the right marketing strategies, I had, was building the list, I had the funnels and the autoresponders and I was networking and speaking and doing follow-up and I was doing phone calls. I was doing direct mail and I was doing uh, publicity. I was doing all kinds of different lead generation, marketing, follow-up and sales strategies, right? And I couldn't fathom like doing more. I had no idea what was next. And so I hired, I had a couple coaches before that, but I had hired this new mentor because he, he said, well, I'm gonna help you make more money. And it was all about making money. Like he was encouraging me to like, go after millions of dollars, Katrina. Why, you know, 100,000 is too small, thinking too small. And I said, well, you know, when I get to 100,000, then I'll look at the next goal, right? And, but he was uh, adamant about me putting a higher goal out there. And so I reluctantly put out like, okay, let's make $5 million, right? Well, that was impractical. Uh, let me tell you, that was very impractical to set that kind of a goal when you weren't even making 100000 yet. But, so that didn't happen, obviously, that year. But so I was with him for a whole year, and I had a mastermind program uh, where there was about 15 of us as well as him, and I was doing some one-on-one -on -one coaching with him as well. But every time I got in the hot seat, if you've ever been in a mastermind, you know sometimes you get up in front of the room and you're in a hot seat, right? And this was in person, and there's like a U shape of, of people sitting around, and they're all eyes or attention on you, and you get to talk about what the biggest challenges that you have, and, and then everybody gives you advice and love and all that kind of things and resources. And what happened was, um, I would get up in front of the room, I'm like, okay guys, what do I need to do to hit six figures this year? What do I need to do? Tell me what I need to do. And many of them were more spiritual, conscious-minded entrepreneurs, good friends, don't get me wrong, we all bonded really well. Um, but I felt a little bit more practical, they were more woo-woo or spiritual, and you know, that kind of thing. And, <laughs> and they would just tell me, Katrina, you just need to be love. And I'm like, okay, but what do I need to do? Like, I don't get it. And they would just say, just be, just be, Katrina, be love. Just be love. When you go into a room, just be love. Just be with people. Be open. Be open to receiving. Be open to connecting. Be, be love. And I'm like, okay, but I don't get it. I don't understand what I need to do. Like, I need to get more clients in the door. I need to, you know, build my list more. What are some strategies that I can do to, to do that? And, and they would just, they wouldn't tell me anything. And so I was so frustrated. I would literally cry. I'm like, I don't get it. And I would cry. I cried almost all year long in that mastermind and with that coach because 
it was just so frustrating. It was so foreign to me. I mean, I grew up with Zig Ziglar and Brian Tracy, the practical sales tips, right, and training. You know, that's how, I mean, I've been in sales and marketing since I was 16, and my first job was an ice cream scooper at Thrifty's, and I used to sell people up from one scoop to two to three, right? So it always, I was always thinking about upselling and selling and marketing and, and things like that. And so to retrain my brain, to now be love, I'm like, oh my God. So it took like literally, as you can imagine, it took about a year, the whole year for me to really try to figure out what to do to be love. <laughs> and so at, I went to live events, I'd go to conferences, and I would like have this little mantra before I went in and it would be like, okay, be love, be open, you know, and, and I'd go in and I would just be, I would talk to people, but I wouldn't be like, oh, who do I need to meet? La, 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 you know, I would be waiting for the right people to approach me and waiting for those perfect people to sit next to me or for me to be called to sit next to somebody, right, at, at lunch or in a, in a session. And it always, it was very strange, but those of you who are spiritual minded get this. It was very strange, but it always it always happened that I sat next to the perfect person that totally needed me, um, you know, needed my services or, or programs. And I sold a lot of, of programs and got a lot of clients that year. And it was really odd. It was like, how is this happening? And I would, you know, it was the universe just putting people together. And I wasn't trying at all whatsoever. I was trying to just be and be helpful and give advice and and free resources and free support. And I was just giving, 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 giving all year long. At the end of that year, I made $100,000 in my business. And yeah, I was super excited. I just, I think it was about $110,000 I made that year. And I was jumping for joy and looking back on it, I'm like, I didn't do anything differently. I went to more, I went to the same amount of networking events and conferences. I did the same follow up. I did the same kind of thing uh, online. I had a team that would do some marketing for me too. And the only thing that was really different was my, my beingness, my me, the way I was being, whether I was showing up at live events or showing up um, on social media or whatever, it was, uh, it was the way I was being that caused me to get that $100,000 that year. And uh, not only that, but I had been single at the time too. So, and uh, divorced from um, about three years at that point. And I was like really looking for love, right? And at the end of that year, I found who I thought was going to be my love of my life. So I had love and money at the end of that, <laughs> of that year. At the end of the torturous year, I say, because it was very painful to go through all that self-development internal work um, that some people avoid right like the play but i had invested twenty five thousand dollars in that mentor and that mastermind that year and by golly i was gonna really i was gonna get my i didn't think i was getting my money's worth because nothing was changing until i saw the numbers at the end of the year and i was like oh okay i guess it worked <laughs> and at the time i still was a little skeptical frankly i was don't get me wrong but now looking back on it 11 years later even like five years later i was like what you know and uh within that year of me after the that experience that's when i launched my first my first love and money live event right because i had a live love and money business summit is what i called it back then in 2009 and I realized that the being plus the doing makes more of a consistent revenue generating business. Now it wasn't until I had a consistent revenue generating business over six figures or multiple six figures uh, for about five, six years that I realized that's what uh, did it. And in fact, I created this, um, the eight secrets to a consistent money making business and I just recently put it into a little cool brochure, and it's it's really kind of fun. Uh, it's a fun little marketing piece, um, and I'll read them to you, actually. This is something I created about um, maybe a year, year and a half ago, when I realized, okay, what is what are the things that, um, before I read the eight things, but the three, so 
<laughs> Live video. Woo! I have a couple thoughts for you. Okay, so um, before I go into that, what I realized though, in um, just a couple weeks ago, I was at this event, right? I was at this event and there was a speaker talking about story, telling story in, in your speaking presentations, how to really tell more of your points in a story aspect. And um, after he was done, one of the, um, I was thinking to myself, well, I'm more of a practical, tactical speaker and trainer. And I was thinking, how do I go from telling the eight steps or the 10 steps or the three keys to, you know, making more money or building your business or whatever? How do I go from that practical, tactical advice type speaking and presentation to more of a story type presentation, maybe more as a keynote or inspirational talk? And this is a true story. This just happened to me like two, two and a half weeks ago. And uh, it, it was uh, it was really eye opening because I felt I feel sometimes or I, up until then I felt sometimes like I wasn't really that keynote speaker even though I did have some talks on my book like Love Yourself Successful um, is a great book and it's more inspirational motivational kind of a talk or kind of a book and, a, and that's what the love and money stuff is. But I always turned it back to a practical tactical. Um, but what happened two and a half weeks ago when I heard this guy talk, somebody else asked a question and she said, well, what if I don't know my true message? What if I don't know my true message? And uh, I was thinking, wow, what is my true message? You know, I'm, I've got all these, you know, six steps to do that and, and nine steps to do that and three keys to marketing and all these different kinds of practical tactics. What is my true message? And he told a story that made me, give me the biggest aha that I've had in a long time. And it was, okay, you're sitting on an airplane. You're, and this is um, Bo Eason. Bo Eason is the speaker that I'm referring to. He's a great guy. Uh, and I'm actually attending his story workshop in May this year in LA, no, um, La Jolla, if you want to go. But uh, so he said, okay, you're sitting on an airplane and it's going down and you're not going to make it, but the person next to you is. What are the, what is the one, or I think he said three, I don't know, I, I, I heard three. What are the three most important, most critical things? you need to tell this person about what you do or who you are or your what it is that you um sh what you you know what you share and um what are the three what's the most critical thing you need to share about yourself or what you do and it gave me this huge aha like i've been sharing the practical tactical things but what really is the most critical things to building a consistent business as an entrepreneur. What are the most critical things? And so I was, I had this download while I was listening to him uh, explain to the, you know, answer this gal's question. And I'm thinking, okay, well, the first one has to be be love, like, because that was a huge thing for me to learn that. Uh, and whenever I turn on the be love mindset and uh, embody that in the situation, it always goes my way, right? Not in a manipulative way, but in a just honest, that's how it goes. Hey, Darla, thanks for joining us. Um, and then I'm like, okay, so how do I encompass all the 462 things you need to do then into one, pra like, not practical, but critical thing that I need to share. And it was be organized. You've got to be organized, right? You got to be organized as a business owner. You got to be organized with everything you do from your computer desktop to your email, to your programs, products and services and the pricing and what you offer. You got to be organized with the back end on how you handle all your paperwork. You got to be organized in your office. You got to be organized with how you're um, managing your team, with how you're doing your marketing, your follow-up, your lead generation. You gotta be organized with everything you're doing in order to really manage it better and be more productive. So, okay, so be love, be organized, and what's the final thing I was thinking? 
uh, that is so critical that people have to know in order to stay consistently profitable in your in your business is always be in action always be in action if you sit back and you just either meditate or say affirmations and hope it's gonna work out that's not that's that's in passive action <laughs> uh, it I guess it's action but it's not really action like get to a networking event and just be love. You don't have to market, 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 and promote, promote, promote. And in fact, the I did a, I did a video a couple weeks ago about how marketing is changing. And it's not about promoting, promoting, promoting. It's about being inspiring, motivating, and, and sharing and giving. It really is because there's so much noise out there. There's so many people that have the free thing, the free audio, the free download, the free this, the free that. And I've been preaching that for years and years and years that you want to have that. And that is part of the doing, okay? But if you're not always also actively being, then you're going to get lost in the dust this year and moving forward, I think, because it really does come back down to the heart. It comes down to who you are, who you're showing up as, and and really how you're connecting with the people around you and the people that want to follow you and want to listen to you. So be love, be organized, and always be in action. Uh, being in front of new people, um, just, you know, get out there. Get your stuff out there. And you can't just sit back. Um, you, do, you do need to do some of the doing, right? Like making phone calls is on my list of things to do today uh, because... Um, but it's not really, it's not cold calls, it's warm calls, it's follow-up calls, it's people that actually said, yeah, well, let's connect, right? And then so many of you don't do, don't continue that conversation and, and follow up and connect. And that's, that's a mistake. So I just wanted to share today about being love, giving more love, receiving love. Let's also receive more love, not only this month, but every day. Like if someone wants to pay you a compliment, if someone wants to give you something, if someone wants to offer you a free ticket or to an event, or if someone wants to, you know, have you as a guest on their podcast or whatever, receive it, say yes, and just always be in action. But, um, but yeah, so, oh, and the very last thing is I have to get to uh, my mastermind call. But the last thing I want to say is please look into your love life, okay? This is a month to look into your love life because a lot of you could be settling with people who are not, um, not serving you, not really supporting you. They say they are, but then they do things that are contradictory to what they say. And so really take a look at your life, those relationships in your life, because, you know, one of the reasons I wrote Love Yourself Successful, the book behind my shoulder, is because I wasn't getting love in my marriage um, years ago. And I was, I'm so filled with love and, and affection, and, and I wanted to feel that back that we had grown apart. And uh, I had to make the decision to leave the marriage because I didn't want to live another 40, 50 years without feeling that love, attention, and affection. And I deserved more. And I finally realized that. And don't wait 10 years. Don't wait five years. Don't even wait one more year if you know you're worth more and you're not getting what you need from that significant other. Um, and please don't settle. If you're looking for someone right now, if they're all this, but this thing over here is not so great, please don't settle. There's When you don't settle and you find the right person like I have now, then, oh my God, life is so amazing. So I just want to encourage you to stop settling and tolerating um, not really supportive and loving people in your life. So there's my message about love today. Uh, I've please comment and I'm happy to check on the comments and I want to hear your thoughts. I want to hear if this helped you, if it got you thinking at all. Um, if you are on track and in love with yourself and other people, 
fantastic. Please share the love today and have a great Valentine's Day. And um, if you are interested in the love and money stuff, uh, you know, I have the book. Obviously, it's it's like 10 bucks on my website. You can go get it. But uh, I have the Love and Money Live event coming up in March uh, this year in Sacramento. Love to see you there. You can get all the information on my website. Um, if you go to if you go to Live Big Events, LiveBigEvents.com, you'll check out all my events. And no pressure, really, but oh my God, is it different than any event you'll ever be, you'll ever get to. So thanks, you guys. Have a wonderful day and uh, be loved. <laughs>